Okay, in this video I'm going to recorrect uh, postcard 12.5, which is an exercise that shows the value of multiplying uh, through a blurred layer, layer mask using a false profile. Um, I'm not going to refer to the written text before doing this. I'm going to be doing it totally from scratch. So I don't know whether I'm going to be duplicating exactly the way that I did things the first time, but we'll see. Okay. Um, here I've got it on screen. This is the original picture. And I can see already that this is the type of picture that we want to use the blurred layer mask multiplication technique with. Because you can easily divide this picture into two halves. The light half consists of the water and the beach and the sky. The dark half, this water break. Um, we want to bring them closer together. We want, uh, just as we would do if a picture was of people in sunlight and shadow, we want to bring the two halves closer together. It's not really appropriate for something like the bigger hammer action, where we would be trying to get a tremendous amount of detail in the shadows. Here I'm not very interested in the shadow detail of this water break. I just want it to be a little bit lighter than what it is now. But I think we can get a lot better variation in the water. Um, I think we can probably get more interesting color. Let's see what happens. My first step is going to be to evaluate color. See if there's anything wrong with the original. Okay, the water itself is kind of an aqua color. I have no idea whether that's right or wrong. The sand is uh, sort of a warmish yellow. The water break itself, I don't know what it's supposed to be, so I can't even guess. The sky, uh, okay, plus two, minus seven in the A and the B. The minus seven means it's more blue than it is yellow, thank you God. The uh, A says that it's slightly more magenta than it is green. That could be right, I'm suspicious of it, particularly in view of the water here, or of the beach being somewhat redder than I might think. So at a guess, this is very, very slightly too purple, this picture. So I'm going to make a change. It's probably not going to be worth very much. Um, so I'm just going to go into the sky here, find it, lighten the green channel very slightly because I certainly don't want it to become a green picture. Okay, now the sky is perfectly blue. This is more like what I would expect. Cool. Change to color mode. All right. That's that step. Now we think about luminosity. Here's a layer, and let's look at the channels. Red, green, blue. And the worst one is the, appears to be the green. The blue has good sand, the water is not so good, and the water break is a little bit dark. The red channel seems to have the best water in it, and we'd like to have more detail there. Uh, but if we apply a curve to it, it's going to blow out the sand, I think. So if we, if we like, do something like this, yeah, you see, this, that gives better water, but the sand goes away. So that's not a good thing. Instead, with the red channel open, I'm going to do apply image, blue, mode darken. Okay, and that, that way I avoid lightening the sky, I avoid lightening the water, because I'm really trying to get more action here in the sand so that I'm not going to damage it with the curve like I was threatening to before. Now, the sand is not really all that important in terms of detail. So as long as we get something there, I'm cool with it. What I really don't like about what's happening here is that it's losing whatever detail there is in the water break. Okay, I'm not horribly concerned about it, but I am going to sort of cheat here. I'll apply this um, uh, this blue channel through a mask so that it emphasizes the lighter areas. And maybe I, I don't really need it at this opacity either. So just guessing at that, of course. Okay, so there's before, there's after. And now there's enough action in the sand that my curve is not going to blow it away. Okay, so here we go. And now things are looking up a little bit. Okay, this is a pretty good channel now. How does it compare, this new red, how does it compare with the green? Well, it sure, sure, sure looks better to me. There's the red, there's the green. So let me apply the new red to the green and see what happens. Not darken mode. Apply the red 
Yeah, let's let's do darken mode. That seems to be better. Maybe. 50% darken mode and 50% normal mode. As you can see, this is all seat of the pants. Um, this is not some scientific way of doing things. Um, how about the blue channel? Blue channel usually is not worth very much for contrast, but maybe we can do something here. Well, I mean, as long as we're doing things, I'll do that just to see if it gets any more contrast in the water. And where do we stand? Okay, here's the composite color. Change mode to luminosity. Before, after. And you can see there's a whole lot more life here. We still have to deal with the problem that there's a light half of this picture and a dark half, but if that's the before and that's the after, we've come a long way so far. The next uh, step would be shadow highlights. Um, this we, we should be able to get a little bit more detail in the water break. I don't know about the sand and that kind of stuff, but I assume that this is not going to hurt if I do this. Yeah, you see that's, that's picked up a little bit of detail in the water break. Let me do Command Z. There's before, there's after. So that was a sp small step in the right direction. Okay, now the, um, the multiplication. But before I multiply, I have to lighten the picture because we really can't afford to get this water break any darker than it already is. So the whole thing has to be made lighter. Then we can multiply through the mask. There are a number of ways to do this. Um, it's been found that the two best ways are to use the image adjust exposure command or my favorite which is to just assign a false profile. Um, False profiles, we've got some documentation on it. I don't want to go into too great depth on it other than to say that a false profile redefines RGB. Um, if you apply a false profile, like I'm doing here manually, you have to know what variant of RGB you're in and you have to go looking for an appropriate profile. And there are a whole lot of them. So you sort of, ha sort of have to know what you're doing here if you're going to do it manually. And there's a decent false profile for present purposes. Okay, but most people don't want to do that because they may not know what their, um, uh, what their working space is or they may not know how to find the proper false profile. So we have the action that does it for us. And this action is uh, an intelligent action. It looks and finds out what sort of uh, working space you have in your own RGB color settings. So it gives you the proper RGB, uh, proper RGB false profile. And the one that's proper for you may not be proper for me. Okay, so there, it, it knows the difference. Okay, and now what happens when I do apply this? Okay, I'm going to click this one. And it assigns a proper false profile. And now it also is kind enough to give us a multiplication layer. It doesn't have a layer mask yet because it wants us to pick out the right one. But there's the false profile. It's the same one I just picked out. Um, and there's this multiplication layer waiting for us to do something with it. Okay. The choice of layer mask here is quite important. Uh, ordinarily, you would want to use probably uh, something from the lower layer if the picture is of the ordinary sort where the two halves of it are of equal importance. The only time you take from the top layer is if the darker half of the picture is distinctly more important than the lighter half, which is not the case here. Okay, so I'm going to be taking something from the lower half of the picture. Um, the RGB composite would be a good guess. I think I, think I might want to have the, the red channel instead. That might make the water look better. I'm not sure. I guess I'd just have to try. So I'm going to go from the background layer. I'm applying to the layer mask here. That's what happens if I choose RGB. That's what happens if I choose red. Hmm, I didn't think I was wrong. What happens if I choose blue? I mean, that conceivably is the best of all, but I'm wondering if I'm going to have some sort of haloing issue if I do that. I think this is the conservative approach. I'm going to apply the RGB. Might be right, might be wrong. And now I can do my blurring because we have two layers that are of distinctly different darknesses. The layer mask does need to be blurred. So one possibility 
and this is sort of the default, would be Gaussian blur and see if it makes it better. Works for me. I don't see a particular need to use some other filter than that. That does seem to uh, focus the picture pretty well. Um, their way, their, there's a little bit of a haloing around the, um, the water break, but it doesn't bother me. I have easy ways to control it if it does. Um, for example, if that really bothered me, and I'm telling you it doesn't, I could do it this way. Use a different sort of blur. This is the surface blur, which is less prone to haloing. It's not quite so good for detail. I could try that to the layer mask. There's before, there's after, and that's pretty nice. And then I could do a Gaussian blur on top of that. But I would fade that one back to lighten. So now we have a, um, a blurred uh, layer mask that what looks pretty good. There's, without the multiplication layer, there's width. Everything seems to be in order. This is not the sort of picture that I would use the HK action on for, I don't think, because it would probably darken the water break too much. So I think we can just live with what we have and move on to um, the color enhancement, which would be um, MMM and color boost. So I'm going to do this. Select you know, uh, an interesting part of the picture, go like this. Now you can dismiss this dialog permanently if you want to. That's part of the preferences of the panel. But I'll just continue like that and we'll see what happens. Okay, nice bright colors here. Um, first, does the MMM luminosity help? Sure looks to me like it does. I think we have better water with this layer here. Um, how about the endpoint adjustment? Because I don't think that we have really a light point in the picture. So, okay, I'm going to uh, curve that and get some light and dark points in here. Hmm, that seems to be better. In fact, I'll make a darker shadow here as well. And while I'm at it, I'm going to look at the overall weight of the picture. Is it maybe too light? Because if it is, I can just do something like that and pick up some weight in the water as well. Yeah, that seems a little bit better to me. Okay, how about the color? Um, let's look at the two different layers that are affecting it. Here's the MMM color layer, which is giving color variation. Interesting, I think it may be making too much out of the sand here. So I'm going to tone down its opacity just a hair. Then I go to the color boost layer. I, I think I'm going to use the, um, uh, oh, the B channel of LAB as the mask because I, want, I like the, what's happening to the blues, not so much with the L's. This is pretty complicated. Um, you, you don't have to feel embarrassed if you, if you don't realize that this would be a way of emphasizing the blues. You could just use uh, any kind of layer mask or you could reduce layer opacity. But I'm going to apply an inverted copy of the B here as the layer mask and see if that helps me do what I want to. Then I'm going to increase contrast on the layer mask. And hopefully in doing this, this is going to emphasize the blues at the expense of the yellows. And because the mask is there, I think I can even increase the opacity of the color boost layer to get something like that going. Now we really have a whole lot of variation in the bluer parts of the water. So uh, if we have a good dark shadow, which we kind of do, then I'm happy with this. And the last thing that I would do is sharpen it. Um, and that's close enough. I don't, don't see anything terrible about it. I'll, um, I'll live with this. Is it better than the original? Let's find out. Well, that's the original. And that's the corrected version. Original and corrected version. Now, here comes a question. Is this better than the one that's in the book? I happen to have that behind us. Or at least uh, the one that was done before it was, uh, uh, before we put it into CMYK for printing. Well, that's the one in the book. And that's this one. Something to be said for this one, wouldn't you say? 
I'm not going to rewrite the book to make it make it work out that way, but you know, I think this this one's pretty nice. So anyhow, that's a full correction that shows you the power of the um, false profile plus multiplication through blurred layer mask technique.